Hello there fellow modellers, Steve here and it's been about six months since I last made a video I was just having to check on my laptop to see when I actually when the last video was made and it was actually two days before Christmas you know, I've got a bottle of beer up here because it's like an oven I've got the window open and I've got my little fan on because as what's happening in the rest of the country we're all experiencing some hot weather and I mean very hot so nice cobra lager worth waiting for right what I've got to go through this is it's just a bit of an update really because I was watching uh, Michael Booth, Model Art 633's update last night. Hi there, Michael. About what he's doing, what he's got planned and such and such. And I thought, you know, it's about time I got a, an update done. So, I've got some completed kits. A kind of few. Uh, a couple of group builds I'm going to enter. And one I've got planned for the rest of this year. I mean, we're halfway through. Now, I was watching my video... And some of the kits that I've planned for this year, I've never even built yet. But I'm planning on building them. I think I've built one, maybe. But there's a couple more I've got, but I've built some others that weren't on the list. But I'm trying to get them anyway. Stop babbling. So, we'll start off first with the Kursk 75th Anniversary Group Build, which was hosted by Nigel Wells and Michael Campbell. Mike Campbell. Hi there guys, hope you're doing well. And it was a great group build and I did two pieces this time because I remember that I did one piece for the 70th anniversary of the Kursk group build which was five years ago. Where's all the time went? But there's been quite a few builds on most, a lot of it is armour obviously would have been the biggest tank battle in history but there has been a bit a few planes and I've did one plane and something else that's not armour but it's, it's associated with it I'm absolutely parched right oh that was a cocktail stick so first off we'll start off with the Heinschel 129 or 126 I can't remember which that was the first one I built, so we'll start off and I'll get some I've got it on my tripod. Zoom in. <clears throat> Pardon. Now with it obviously being the biggest tank battle in history, I thought, well why not do something because if you see it has that enormous I think it's 75 millimeter gun I don't know how many rounds it kept in there but it must have been lethal but it was a, an armor plated plane that was just an armor plated box with the pilot in and the plane was built round it Well, I thought I'd do that, and it was obviously it's the old Airfix kit, and it went together pretty well, no problem with it. Not a lot of detail in the cockpit, but as you can see, you can't really see anything. I put a pilot in, but you can't really, it's all you can see really is, is his life jacket. That's about it. I'll turn it round again. I put this on, obviously, it's went on the the slideshow what Mike did for it but it was a great group build and are you going to do one for the 80th anniversary in five years time <laughs> we'll see so that was the Heinzel 129 or 126 I can't remember which I've got to put this put these somewhere where the number stood on and the second one I did was this which was 
I'll have to get the instruction leaflet out. That was a Heinshaw HS129. It was a KFZ 385 tank wagon, 148 scale, and it was made by Opel. It was an Opel, I think. Yes, it was. And it was made by Italieri. And it was a great kit to build this. The, the figures didn't come with the kit, they're of another kit. But you could either build one of three versions. I think there was one in France, one in Italy, and this one was in Germany. But I've had a look online, and it's roughly the same camouflage as what would have been in Russia around the time of the battle. It's a Luftwaffe refueling vehicle. Because obviously there was a fair bit of air power. And it's a grey, it's a cam camouflage. I think it was khaki with the stripes of green olive drab, I think. So this was a, a simple kit to build and there's the back with the pipes in. What I did was, that was all moulded in and I just highlighted it, dry brushed it with a bit of sil with a bit of aluminium or silver and it's brought it out. And obviously you could either have the door shut or open and the figures, which is a Luftwaffe officer and a mechanic, I got Pardon of another kit I had somewhere and I just put them with it. I was going to do Some fuel drums, but I never got them finished, but that was okay the way it was on the little layer uh, The little slab there with the green on I just used PVA glue and The green powder that looks like grass. I've done it on a few more before so that was the tank wagon That's over there. Now this was something that I started last year and it wasn't actually for the Kursk group build even though the tank that was in it or that's on it was in the group build. I have to put this somewhere where it doesn't get knocked over. zoom out and it's the Revel 135th scale TU-34-76 which was the earlier version and it's in a winter scene and I, st I started this last year I think it was about May or June and it's just a bit of plasterboard with a tree which was a branch out of a tree in the garden <laughs> that's meant to look like a tree and I think it, I'm quite I'm very pleased with how it's turned out now I've always wanted to do a snow diorama with a tank because I've been watching over the years a lot of Mike's dioramas with these armor and he really puts every effort into it and I've I've been inspired by him and he's inspired us to do some more armor dioramas but I think it's really turned out good. I'm really well pleased with it. I just really, it's actually sprayed white and I really weathered it so it would look dirty. And I've put it on there and the, the only problem was, I'll get the pointer out. I'll have to use a knife. With it being the rubber tracks it had been an old kit, it wasn't the, the more complicated one where you get the separate ones. I think it was in the join. You could see the join and it looked terrible. So I thought, well, I put it on a snow scene and I think the join is in there. And I think it's there. But obviously I've covered it up with snow. And I weathered it and then just dusted it with snow. 
PV, no not, uh, it's a scenic, oh sorry, scenic scenes which is out of a local hobby shop. You just spray the, the, the glue on and sprinkle the snow on and then spray the glue, glue again and it hardens and you can see it really is hardened. And I just managed to get it finished for our local model show in it was in the beginning of June. And I think I might take it down to Telford later on this year. But I'm well pleased with that. That's great that. I'm chuffed with that. It's really turned out well. Looks like it's been left all night. Snowfall in Russia. So now where can we put that where it will not get stood on? There. Right, next one is another kit that I completed for... This was for another group build. And it was for Ian Poulton's Foreign Service Group Build. That's the UK scale modeler. Hi there Ian. Okay. And it was that one. Which was a matchbox Hawker Hunter. And I've did it in Royal Jordanian Air Force Markings. And that turned out really well. Obviously with it being an airfix kit. It didn't have any problems with filler. I think a little bit of filler uh, down there and a bit round the cockpit, but that's about it. And it's really turned out well. Standard RAF camouflage with a red tail, a red nose, and a grey underside. The Markins, I got them, I think, from a show somewhere. There was a, a lot of Foreign Service, Indian Air Force, Egyptian Air Force, Syrian Air Force, RAF. But I really enjoyed making that. So that was a fantastic group building. And I actually first met him at Cosford this year. And I've been corresponding with him for about three years. <laughs> but it was good to meet you anyway. And if I can, I might get to Cosford next year. Unless you're coming down to Telford this year. Right, so where can I put that now? I'll put that on there. Now this one was just the one I did myself. And it was the old Airfix A26 Invader. But I've did it as when it was as one of the many rules that it was converted to after the war which was a fire bomber or a water bomber whichever way you whichever way you go now the decals this example actually is in a Canadian museum now because obviously it operated as a fire bomber and water bomber in Canada and it was operated by the company called Conair which I think still exists. Now I couldn't find the, the markings for Conair anywhere online. So I've actually made them. Just the black stripes were just spare decal markings I had. The 20 number 22, I picked that up at Telford last year and it was for an F-84 Thunder Chief. And I seen the 22 in red letter and I says that'll do for the invader. And the red lettering for Conair is just a red sheet of different coloured, of different sized red lettering. And it's turned out really well. And I managed to stick a weight in the nose so it isn't a tail sitter. And that was fantastic. That was, that went together quite well. All of these old Airfix kits seem to go together with no problem at all. So 
So that's the A26 Invader. Right, what have I got else have I got? Ah, this. Well, I picked this up at Huddersfield, which was in February. And it's the Mashi MC72, one of the Schneider Trophy races. Which actually, I don't know whether it still holds the, holds the world speed record for a seaplane, or it did. Even after we'd won the Schneider Trophy, it managed to break the speed record. Now this was a, a smear kit, S-M-E-R. I think it's from the Czech Republic. And the floats there, floats were okay, it was the supports there. They were murdered to put on because they weren't aligned right, they didn't have any numbers. And what I've did is I've sprayed it all red, which is what the, the original plane is, because it's still in existence in an in a museum in Turin, I think. And it's got radiators there, which is brass coloured, which I've yet to put on yet. I've got some brass coloured or copper coloured. It's the equivalent of bare metal foil, but it's copper coloured. It goes on the wings underneath and I might give it a go with the bracing because it goes from the, the wing it's like a triangle shape there and there and obviously the the bottom of the floats is silver and it's got two engines mounted in front of one mounted not side by side in a line two engines that's why it was fast But they couldn't, they couldn't fix it. I mean, it had lots of engine problems, so they couldn't uh, have it ready for when we finally won the Schneider Trophy, which was in 1931. So that's that. That's ongoing at the moment. Right. What now? Ah, this, which is a Revel. 172nd scale, A3 Sky Warrior, known as the Whale. It's actually the heaviest aircraft, or the largest aircraft ever to take off from an aircraft carrier and deploy from an aircraft carrier, because the has been, I think, a C-130 Hercules that took off from one of the super carriers. But the inside and the cockpit was just three Mul blocks of plastic for a pilot, navigator and radar operator or bomb aimer. So uh, you can't actually see it now because it's covered up when I'm painting it. But I've scratch built the cockpits, put some seats in, there's a dashboard in, there's radar blocks on the wall and you'll actually see it when it's all done. But it's the standard camouflage. When the original come out they were painted all blue but that didn't last very long and they just went for the standard grey and white of the 50s and 60s and I'm doing it with the wings folded they're downstairs at the moment and the, the rudder comes down like that and it didn't have any jet engines in it was just there but I've got some old jet turbines of a Tomcat kit that I've broken up I'm just going to use them and that's the last one is for Michael Booth, Model Art 663, hi there Michael, again, for his ship group build. Now I'm doing the Revel, I think it's one, it's a 1-400 oil tanker, SO Glasgow. Now I bought that at one of our, at our show last year and there was no decals in it all. So I thought I'll make this into a BP tanker because I went online and you'd find that most of the tankers from that operate with BP and SO from about 19... 
1940 to about 1960 were all basically the same design. But then I soon was hunting about on eBay and I found this. And it was a whole deckle sheet of SO Martins. So I've got the SOs back to SO Glasgow now. But this is going on fine. I was watching his, uh, his video and he reviewed what he's. Uh, his Corvette is HMCS Snowberry and it's looking good. Obviously it's a, it was a flat uh, water line so I've got a uh, one of that thing that's coastal kits, a seascape with the waves on. I want to use that. And I've got a lot of the, the things here. Oh, there's the funnel but I've never done anything with it yet. It's black and white really. Where are we there? There's the funnel. But that doesn't finish till and it's September, so I've got plenty of time to do that. Right, something else, which the last video I showed you was wasn't painted yet. But now it's complete. And that's that. Which is the Airfix 148 scale MiG 17 in North Vietnamese Air Force Martins. Now that was a great kit to build to build, to build, even though it had no seat, anything. So I had to get something offline, it was meant for a Hasegawa kit, but I've managed to to modify everything and you can't really see much if you if you look, it's got the seat belts on, the canopy, uh, the side and the control column, dashboard, everything. It will look better if you actually see it, I'm going to take this to Telford early air later this year as well. What I did with the camouflage was sprayed it brown and just broke up little dots of blue tack, stuck it on there all over, sprayed it green, peeled the blue tack off and you've got the mottled type camouflage. Please how that's turned out. Oh, just bang me head on the window. Right. So that's it for now. Oh, I've got two more. But they've got no markings on. I've got to put the markings on at the moment. There's this one, which is the 148th monogram. FA 18 Hornet. Surprise! <laughs> and it's going to be in the colours. It's going to be in that scheme. Which I got this off eBay and it's basically the FA 18 Hornet. 20 years operation by the Royal Australian Air Force. There's a lot of Markings to put on different things. This has been a good one. I've got, this is one of the many 148 scale Hornets that I have. And it hasn't got a pilot in, but the cockpit is fully blasted out. <laughs> it's got seat belts on, everything. It did have a, it has got a, a pilot did come with it, but when I was making it, it said on the destructions, the, ins the instructions, put the pilot in first and glue the halves together. But I glued the half thing and I'll, the pilot will go in, but it wouldn't have to chop his legs off, so I've left it. I might just leave him. I might get him sitting on the wing, even though you're not supposed to. But that's Martin's to put on that. 
pleased with how the colour scheme on that's turned out. And here's another, another hornet, which is to put markings on. I'm going the, uh, the UK scale model route here. Tiny things. It's a 114 scale Revel. Uh, it's an FA an FA18E Super Hornet. what it should look like. It's in the margins of VFA 31 and it's the 75th anniversary colour scheme. That's the famous US Navy fighter squadron with Felix the Cat holding the bomb. So I've got the margins to put on with that. That's it with kits so far. Now we're back to the seat again. And I'm nearly out of time. So I'm going to have to. That's me review. And there's a couple of. There's a couple of group builds that I'm going to enter. One is Ian Poulton's World War I group build. I'm going to be doing that. Which is an Albatross D5. And the other one, which is running now but I haven't done my review for it for Martin Lamont's Bomber Command Group build which is the Matchbox Vickers Wellington Mark 10 well, I'll have to get a review done for that before I can start it but otherwise that's what I'm up to now so I'll have to go off now because I've run out of, nearly run out of time so it's good I'll probably get this loaded tomorrow which is now Mon which is, it's now Monday so it'll be unloaded on Tuesday and hopefully I'll not wait so long to get another video done. So, happy modelling, have fun, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.